the last time I highlighted a list of analysts' top stocks, one of them jumped 70%, and the group is up 25% since. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with your weekly market update, 9 a.m. Eastern, every Monday morning with the stocks to watch this week, and I'm usually the last one to follow Wall Street's experts into a stock, but the favorite picks can be a good starting point for your stocks to buy. I'll highlight five of the best returns for the rest of the year according to Wall Street analysts, along with the 10 stocks you might want to avoid. Plus, why Trump Media, ticker DJT, is going crazy and about to get crazier. But first, I want to highlight a special offer from one of the research tools I use, Seeking Alpha Premium. I've used Premium Access for more than seven years to get analysis and ideas, and more importantly, to make sure I'm getting the bull and bear case for a stock. You'll find pre-built stock screeners for top-rated stocks, dividend yields, and growth stocks, and you'll be able to sit in on a company's earnings report to get the inside information. And for the next three days, Seeking Alpha is running a special promotion, $60 off its premium access with the coupon I'll leave in the description. Check out that link, try it out, and make sure you get that deal. The coupon is only good through April 3rd, so make sure you jump on that if you want that $60 off. Back to those stocks to watch though, and with the market already up 46% from the 2022 start of the bull market, and up 10% this year alone, Analyst expectations for further 2024 gains are modest to say the least. Oppenheimer recently upped its target for the S&P 500 to a Wall Street high at 5,500, but even that is only 4.7% higher from last week's closing price. Six of the 15 banks have targets at or above the current market price, and I expect more than a few are going to upgrade their targets through that first quarter earnings season in a couple of weeks. Now understand, those index targets are generally based on price-to-earnings multiples and estimates for those earnings. Analysts believe the companies in the S&P 500 index will report a cumulative $243 in earnings through 2024 for a strong 10.6% earnings growth over the last year. That optimism doesn't stop there though, with forecasts for another 13% earnings growth to $276 per share next year. The problem is stocks have run so far higher that they need that level of profit growth to make them look attractive. The S&P 500 is now trading at 23.6 times on a price-to-earnings basis. That's the index price level of 52.54 divided by approximately $220 in earnings reported over the last year. That is 12% higher than the 21 times average multiple over the last 10 years. So even that strong earnings growth expected this year would only bring the index down to that average. And that's if stock prices didn't rise for the rest of the year. Of course, not everything in the market is so expensive. Breaking down the price-to-earnings ratio by sector, we still see some relative valuation in shares of energy, utilities, and real estate stocks. Of the 11 stock sectors, those are the only ones trading for under their 5- or 10-year average P.E. ratios. Other stocks, though, are much more expensive, like technology, trading 41% higher than its average 10-year P.E. ratio, materials up 27%, and communication services 19% above that long-term average. Despite the already expensive valuations, Wall Street sees tech stocks continuing to be the big winner for the next year. Tech has the biggest difference between current prices and analyst estimates at 10% higher over the next year, with stocks in the communication services sector expected up 8.7%, and consumer discretionary, up 8%, not far behind. And despite their lagging performance, analysts still don't have much faith in the utilities sector, with expectations for stocks up just 4% over the next year, followed by financials up 2.9%, industrials up 0.7%, and material stocks where analysts think could be actually down 0.2% over the next year. The caveat is that Wall Street analysts tend to follow stocks higher with those price targets, then get caught flat-footed when the prices come down. Honestly, when I was working as an analyst myself, a lot of the analysts I knew couldn't find their ass with a map, but looking at these estimates and the forecasts can be a good starting point to your own research into the sectors and the stocks you want to buy. Looking at the top picks according to analyst estimates, we see a lot of stocks that have struggled over the last year. For example, First Solar, ticker FSLR, is down 15% over the last year along with its peers in the solar energy space. Wall Street still has an average price target of $225 a share, which is 49% higher than the current price. So there is an element of bottom fishing here, but also a reason to look closer at the stock. The demand for electricity is booming from data centers running artificial intelligence and crypto, and that could support solar stocks as they bounce off of this bottom. In that demand theme, we also see AES Corporation, ticker AES, in that top five here, down 23% over the last year as those utility stocks struggled 
but with a potential up 40% upside to that average analyst price target. We've covered Insolite Corporation, ticker PODD, on the channel before, down hard over the last year as that wave of GLP-1 weight loss drugs drives fears that, that insulin delivery systems and other medical device makers could see a crash in demand as people shed those pounds. I think the sell-off is overdone though, and a lot of these medical device makers like PODD could see surprising resilience in revenue. In this one-year price chart of the top five stock picks here, we see that theme of weakness. In the top five stocks to buy, according to analyst estimates, only Caesars Entertainment is up, and that's only up 4.4% over the past year, compared to a 32% run in the overall market. Boeing has crashed lately on renewed problems and is likely to remain weak until it can prove that maintenance and quality control measures are in place. Of the top five here though, I think First Solar and AES are probably the best on that idea of utility and, and renewable energy stocks should do well on that increased electricity demand over the next few years. Now, that theme is reversed in the top five stocks to avoid according to analysts. The top five stocks here are up an average 44% over the last year, with Westrock up nearly 82% and all but Robert Half beating the broader stock market. I do suspect analyst targets are going to come up on some of these, so that price difference isn't as high, but Wall Street is saying that these have already had their best run. A lot of these are tied to that general economic growth like Fastenal, Steel Dynamics, and Westrock, supplying logistics and construction. To me, it seems like a negative call on the overall economy by Wall Street, but I think growth continues to surprise and the bull market keeps going. Now, on to the stocks I'm watching this week and Trump Media and Technology, ticker DJT, had a crazy opening week, converting from its SPAC DWAC shares and jumping 50% over the period. Now, I've kept the stock out of the videos because there's just too much politics around it, but you need to know why DJT is trading so crazily, what is pushing it higher, and why it could get worse from here. First, folks, understand that this is a terrifically risky business and a stock. For the nine months reported in 2023, the company made just $3.3 million in ad revenue and lost $49 million. It's reported 9 million signups to the platform, though active monthly users are closer to 5 million and at a current valuation of $9 billion on the shares, that makes it by far the most expensive at over $1,000 per signed up user and $1,800 per active user versus other sites like Reddit, X, and Snapchat. Even Facebook parent Meta Platforms only trades for a valuation of about $400 per active user. Now because of this, the stock has attracted a mountain of short interest, investors betting the price will fall back down, but there's a glitch in the matrix causing it to be ridiculously expensive to short. Donald Trump himself holds two-thirds of the shares outstanding after that deal, and there's bound to be retail investors that are going to hold the shares out of loyalty. Trump is technically not supposed to sell any of his stock for the six months after the conversion in that lockup period. Now, legally, there would be ways he could sell, but it would look bad and crater the stock, which would not be a good sign before the election. For this reason, there are just not enough shares to loan. You know, when, a, when you short a stock, you borrow the shares from a broker who has to borrow them from another investor's account. That investor is going to want an interest rate for the loan, but there's also a chance that the shares get called back and the broker has to deliver them to that investor. With so few shares available for sale, there's a huge risk that brokers are going to have to go out into the open market to buy shares to deliver that for the short loan. Because of this, if brokers are charging short investors interest as high as 500% annualized to borrow those shares. It's the most expensive stock to short by far, and yet has still $100 million in short interest against it, according to S3 Partners. So instead of just shorting the stock, many investors have gone to the options and have pushed option premiums skyward as well. The April put option at $60 strike price costs $14, while the calls cost $8 a share. In fact, options are so expensive at this point that Bond King Bill Gross is selling those options. Selling the $60 calls and puts nets you $22 a share, and the stock would have to rise or fall by 35% in the next three weeks to lose money. Another stock I'm watching, Medical Properties Trust, ticker MPW, popped 15% last week on news that one of its largest and weakest tenants, Steward, reached a deal to sell its managed care business to the Optum division of United Health. Terms were undisclosed, but Medical Properties highlighted the possibility earlier in the year, saying that a sale of the division could allow Steward to pay back almost all of its loans to MPW. While it's undeniably a step in the right direction, and I still continue to hold the shares of MPW and like the investment from here, there is a caveat on this. Steward and MPW's other big tenant, Prospect Medical, are still operating deeply in the red and are going to need more asset sales to make this survive. 
MBW itself is likely to need to sell down some of its assets in later on this year to pay down those billions in debt due next year. And most worrying there, the Stewart deal is still going to need approval by the Massachusetts Health Policy Commission. Senator Warren of that state railed against the deal when it was announced, saying that it would give United Healthcare too much power, though I hope she realizes the alternative of Massachusetts patients losing care altogether because Stewart just, just closes out completely would be far worse. Showing you that bigger picture here with the sector spider tracker, here 8 of the 11 stock sectors did close higher last week with technology and communication services stocks giving up their market leadership. Up to now, the bull market has been led almost exclusively by those big tech companies and the magnificent 7 stocks. Now we're seeing that leadership broaden out into other sectors, which is a good sign for market strength. While it means there are still investment opportunities across the market, the broader S&P 500 and the NASDAQ indexes may struggle if the biggest stocks trade flat for a while. Now with a bigger trend I've been following, I highlighted stocks in the utility sector late last year as the group struggled under those higher interest rates. While the group is up just 3.6% so far this year, underperforming the broader market, it's beating handily at 5.6% run in the last month and could be one of the surprise performers over the next year or more. The market is just now realizing the immense amount of electricity needed for AI operations, so much that Amazon recently bought a nuclear-powered data center for $650 million. Add that new electricity demand from AI with those, that of crypto, and any utility with spare capacity to sell could be ready to make a lot of money. Already names like Constellation Energy, ticker CEG, and NRG Energy, ticker NRG, are up 30 and 58% for the year, with other names like American Electric and Next Era Energy to follow. This week, Fed officials have 18 speaking engagements, but too bad they'll have nothing to say that the market really hasn't heard already. Fed officials are trying to walk that thin line between talking tough on inflation, but also not so tough on rates that business leaders get scared that rates are going to stay higher for longer. We're going to see important jobs numbers Friday, but won't see anything to change the story until the Consumer Price Index, those CPI report, comes out on the 10th of the month. First quarter earnings reports will start coming out in the next couple of weeks, with companies in the S&P 500 expected to report profits grew 3.6% from a year ago. Now, those expectations are nearly always beaten, and I expect the final earnings growth is going to be closer to 5% plus over the same period last year. That's fairly strong growth, and the third straight quarter of higher earnings, so the market needs it with that current price to earnings at 23 times, 12% higher than the 21x average multiple over the last 10 years. Investors are going to need to see that earnings growth into the market's pricing or we're going to start hearing more calls that the stock market is too expensive. Make sure you get that $60 coupon for Seeking Alpha Premium with the link in the description below. Only good through April 3rd, so don't wait on that. Or click on the video to the right for my 12 stock dividend portfolio that pays you every single week. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.